pretty good. So next we need to make them actual waterproof because just fired clay is actually porous and any liquid you put into it will slowly leach its way through the pores in it. So to seal it, you need to apply some other coating. Previously when I did beer, I used a pine pitch that was historically used to waterproof a lot of containers for fermented beverages. If we advance a little bit further in history, we're entering into the era of glazes. It came a little bit later, creates a watertight seal on everything and gives it a nice glossy final result. So there's a few different ways it can be done. Glazes can kind of be accidentally produced by firing them with actual fire, but the wood ash itself will kind of create a natural glaze. We did this in St. John before with the original ceramics episode that had a natural wood glaze from all the wood and the rice hulls that were burned with it. As we get further into history, glazes become a little bit more kind of figured out and they're able to do more custom ones. It's kind of the precursor to glass. A lot of same ingredients, a lot of same concepts. It's basically a layer of glass that is adhered to the outside of the ceramics, creating a waterproof seal. So I have a lot of similar compounds I've already used in my pursuit of glass that can now be used for making the glaze. So I've got a few different options. Glazes come in a variety of different recipes. I'm just gonna kind of invent my own based on a few recipes I've looked at and see if we can make something decent. Um, so first up, I have some wood ash. This is kind of a very basic core fundamental glaze. I'm gonna combine it with just dried clay. It's gonna act mostly as kind of a binder to hold it all together. We have some pumice. It can be used in a few different glazes. This is from a mine we collected in California. Then we have the natron that I collected from a lake in Wyoming and dried out. This is uh, still smells just as bad as it did then. I collected this with the purpose of glass making because it contains sodium carbonate, which is a really useful flux. Another even better flux that I found when I was making glass is borax that we collected in California. This will allow us to have an even lower firing point so we don't have to necessarily fire it as high of a temperature and get a better result. And then lastly, I have a little bit of the crushed malachite that I originally smelted into copper. And this is copper carbonate in here and this should just give it a nice hue. Um, right now it's green. I'm not sure what the result will be when it's fired. It might turn out blue, it might turn out green. Should just add uh, just a little bit of color to our ceramics and uh, make it a little bit prettier. So I'm gonna mix these all up into a slurry and we can give it a shot, see if it works. Now to start fermenting. First, we'll need to get our garbage. Over the year, I've been growing a nice collection of different vegetables for various projects. So let's collect a few of those, and save all the good parts for future projects, and claim the waste for our booth. Barely in the ground now. Boy, that's a big boy. Mm. Weird looking carrot. That's the carrot. We need that. For a few extra ingredients, also did a little dumpster diving. to make our trash mash, we are going to be taking all the usable parts of the food and getting rid of it and just use the trash. So we're talking the potato peels, the skins of the beets, all the roughage stuff. Gonna put it in the pot and eventually ferment it. No drinking part. <laughs> Do you think the silkworms are looking down on us from silkworm heaven? I like to think that they are. <laughs> He's got beady eyes. I had corn water in my eye. <laughs> that's his that's his noise. <laughs> I've only got eyes for you. It's like a carrot joke because it's supposed to make your eyes out better. I know he's got the knife. <laughs> Die! <laughs> All going in the bad pile. <laughs> then cut all the trash into even finer bits to prep it for the mash. So 
We brought the mash to a boil and then added the crushed malted grain. The grain provides an enzyme that helps break down the starches. Now that it's cooled down to about 75 degrees, we can add the yeast. Once we add the yeast, we're gonna seal it up and it's gonna begin the fermentation process. It smells like alcohol. While that ferments, let's see how many felonies we've managed to commit so far. Moonshine is the official name for any distilled beverage produced illegally without knowledge of the government. But historically, it was the name of any clear, unaged whiskey. Its history in the U.S. dates back to during the Civil War, when non-registered stills were first outlawed, but came to greatest prominence during Prohibition in the 1920s, when all alcohol production and sale in the U.S. were banned. Named Moonshine because it was distilled at night to avoid getting caught, tend to be notorious for being potentially toxic because old automotive parts were frequently used to build the still and because of potential inexperience of the distiller. Is it illegal to make a still? Technically the law is even written in Minnesota that even possessing a still is a felony, but the law is also contradictory, so even the laws are still being rewritten from our prohibition history. We're the number one uh, tax consumer good. It's all about paying taxes. So the federal government taxes us, the state taxes us, you get taxed. So it's all about making sure you're doing it legally, safely, and then of course paying all the taxes that are associated with it. So we put your still under our federal license, done it by the book, everything's kosher. We filed all the paperwork, so we should be good. Okay, thank you for taking care of us. Yes, <laughs> but then, you know, once we make this alcohol, if we do consume it, you gotta pay taxes on it. Add that to your bill of how expensive this project is. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> thanks government. All right, so we got all the pottery glazed up and loaded up with the fermenting garbage. And, mmm. Very garbagey, but also alcoholic. So I think that's pretty promising. So now we have the distillation guy here. We have the boiling pot below. And then this guy has a little bit of a lip. Whereas alcohol condenses on the outside of it, will go out the nose. And then we have the beautiful dumpster that Laura made that uh, will be housing our heat source. A dumpster fire. <laughs> right, let's get set up and start distilling. Thanks to Studio Distilling, we're now able to produce our moonshine under their license and avoid breaking any actual laws today. Now two weeks later, with the mash fully fermented, we can begin distilling. I'm gonna use some glass beakers just so we can see the final result as it comes out. First round of distilling, let's run it through a second time and see if we can get a pure result. 